uh, Arif, can, can I answer a question just to those people doing domain sales for a second? Yeah, sure. Yeah, the, the, the question I have is this, is at the moment there seems to be that the predominant business model in the industry is you go to a marketplace and they charge you 10% or 20% or whatever, some sort of commission. Yeah. Or, um, rather than selling, having a commission base, why not just charge you five cents per month for each domain you list on the platform? Because uh, this would have two effects. One is all the bad domains wouldn't get listed any longer. So that means there'd be all, all the good domains would have more of an opportunity for sa sales. Yeah. And that may, it also means you, that there's no longer a person standing between the buyer and the seller because the, the business model is completely different. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, with the brandable marketplaces, they, they actually have that. I mean, Brand Bucket originally was $10 to list there. Now they brought it down to $1. But one dollar still is a significant barrier, I, I think, when it comes to you know somebody who has a lot of domains that are all are all garbage. I mean, you're not gonna if you have a portfolio of a thousand domains, you're not gonna spend a thousand bucks if you're not making any sales. Well, uh, I, I use FD uh, and Dan, and and one thing that I really like about on FD, and I have to pay to have you know a membership there, is that they develop stuff. They have integrations. Um, you know, into Zapier and other workflows so that I can, I, and they're putting money, they're taking that money and putting it towards things. So they're not entirely commission driven. They're also value driven. And, and so I like that about FD as a platform because um, I can take an automated workflow. If I get queries or leads or interesting, I can use uh, workflows like Zapier or I can manage and manipulate things into Google Sheets or into Excel and O365. And I don't have to do it with, I don't have to know a lot of code to do it. It'll go talk to webhooks and it'll do things. So like if I want to get a pop-up message in an IM when there's an offer on a domain, so it's a little bit more in my face, I can do that. And I can, I can, I can integrate that into whatever workflow that I have. So I think there's some merit to that. But I also think that people who have domain portfolios, many are passive and they're already paying for renewals. So they may just be looking at, um, you know, do I want yet another cost, right? Yeah. And, and I think there's there's a spectrum of profiles out there. But yeah. you have a good point, Mike. And the other thing too is that with marketplaces, they need to hit a certain critical mass. And if domainers were cheap, and it's not it's not even cheap. It's also like it's not the five cents. Sometimes it's just the barrier of yeah, I'm not going to list anything there unless I know I'm getting results. But you know, you're not going to know if you get results until you submit the domains. So any new startup marketplace is going to have a problem getting people to to sign on if they charge anything. Um, you know, once they get a certain size, yeah, they can start doing that. Um, but you know, once they get a certain size, then they don't really need as many, you know, uh, new customers. <laughs> so to, so to put, I mean, at, at a certain point, I mean. These big mar brandable marketplaces like I think Brand Bucket and and Squad Help and whatever it is they have they're closing in on you know hundred thousand domains. I mean what I, I mean if I had to pay to put my domains in a marketplace with a hundred thousand domains, like well you know even if my domains are good, how many eyeballs are actually going to see those domains? You know, it's a uh, you know Squad Help kind of has it has a good thing in that you know they'll have they'll they'll classify them and you know, they'll, they'll categorize things and that, that's, that's good. That helps get more targeted eyeballs. So you don't, you don't need as many eyeballs if the eyeballs are targeted, right? It's the same thing with, I guess, with parking. But at the, at the end of the day, it's, uh, the meters are, are, are cheap. You know, when, the moment you have to charge them for something, they're going to they're gonna shy away from it. And you won't, you won't hit that critical mass you need to have a, a decent marketplace with enough decent domains. But that is legit, Michael. Um, you know, if they had some sort of a tiered level where you, you know, you could be put in the, the lower mix for whatever, just because you're submitting your name and then pay even if it was fractions of a penny or, or some small amount of money to, to actually have your name you know, put on the platform at a, at a higher level, I think would be helpful. You know, I go to afternick.com sometimes before I log in and I see some of the names there. It's like, and, and for, it seems like months, years, they've been, they said these premium domain names, never too late, T-O-L-A-T-E. And, and that's premium, never T-O-late. 
Dot-com, and it's like, here's this premium name. Well, why, why is that even there? You know, let's have some filters. Yeah, because it seems to me that um, a lot of the marketplaces have so much garbage in there that it reduces the sales to the real, really good domains. And the, the fastest way to wash that out would be to actually just charge people a nominal fee and don't charge a, a commission at all. Just have zero commission. If you're going to sell a domain for hundred thousand dollars, all power to you. But what we're going to do is we're going to do self-select by having a reduction in garbage domains because anyone who has a domain is going to sell for hundred thousand dollars. I'm sure they'd be happy to part with five cents a month. Well, I, I I'd like you to help explain me through the no commission model. I mean, that would be great for a seller. It's just an idea I had. Yeah, I had another one, which is why not auction money off? Because one of the things that um, uh, that's lacking in the main industry it seems is, is liquidity. So if I said oh, I got twenty thousand dollars this week and you bid with your domains, and I'll select the big, the best domains that I think are worth the twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, I think um, that'd be an interesting model. The the problem is that person would get bombarded with so much garbage. Yep. Um, that it, it just, I don't see it being feasible. But and again, you can charge people to get the domain. in the five cent model. <laughs> you can only bid on this money if you've chosen the five cent model. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think it's a real, there's some really interesting things. I think that the main sales side of the industry, when I look at it more externally, mm -hmm. uh, it needs, needs to be shaken up. Yeah. I think any, any, any type of thing like that would be more wholesale because, you know, if it's a, if it's a retail buyer, they want a specific domain, right? I mean, like the, the, the ideal would be to have a consolidated marketplace, but at the same time, that could hurt us too in that, you know, yeah, the five cents would become 10 cents and, then, you know, 20 cents a month. And then next thing you know, they're charging a dollar. And then all of a sudden, all these other, other platforms are, are, were, you know, left aside and no longer viable. And there's just one, one big player in town, which we kind of have already one big player in town, but you know, it's, uh, I mean, a lot of these auction platforms have been tried, but the, the key is getting that, that critical mass needed. You know, it's, you need to have a minimum number of buyers with, with money to spend and you have to have good domains as hard getting both of them. In place. Yeah, yeah, I don't actually, I actually don't agree with you there, Arif, because the thing that I think about is that it's less about the, uh, the critical mass of quality domains for sale, because they exist, even if the people here right now would have a critical mass of domains for sale. It's more a case of critical mass of buyers. And where do they come from? They come from domain traffic. A lot of it, most of it comes from domain traffic. The thing that amazes me is the number of um, sellers of domains that have some traffic for domains send it directly to the marketplace page. That marketplace page, the, the person goes to their domain, goes, no, I don't want that one. I'll buy someone else's. And the person actually brought the traffic gets nothing. I don't understand that business model. Uh, uh, that's, based well, on, that's based on some ignorance. I mean, that's, that's basic arbitrage, I think. I mean, that's a, yeah. It's a way for somebody to, to get, yeah, lower, lower, yeah. Yeah, so, so with the result, you've got all these, like the thing we deal with is traffic. And so, uh, and the thing I'm thinking about, what would happen if we picked up our whole volume of traffic and dumped it into some marketplace and suddenly there's a huge amount of demand on domains. So that's the thing I, I, I sort of think about. But like I said, I'm not an expert, um, uh, on domain sales. I'm just sort of trying to think out of the box a bit. Yeah. Mike, one of the things I thought was really good when Associated Cities all got together and all the city.com guys got together and it became a fantastic platform and the amount of knowledge that you learned for all the other city.com owners, it was, in. I know this happened in America, whereupon that some of the big top companies in America wanted to advertise on that network because when you had like something like say 70 geo owners in the States who own probably 300 top city names, that attracted advertisers 
to advertise directly. And I was peeved off because obviously coming from Europe, I was sitting there going, well, it's only for America, um, sort of thing. But I realised that the power in that, and if you can imagine if you take maybe there's 50 domainers um, that own, say, all these property names, right? And one sitting with 20, another one sitting with 100, another one sitting with 50, and they probably know each other. Can you imagine the buying power that they would have in the advertising power if they all banged their heads together and said, right, how do we get this all up and running? How do we get this developed? And they build that platform where it runs the whole lot. The amount of revenue that they guys and they people would earn, and it doesn't matter what, what kind of business that you would do, and that would generate far more revenue than parking and anything else because they would work together as a co-op or a co um a conglomerate and actually get put the, that whole group together. I mean, if, you, if you've got like 10,000 names or 2,000 names or 5,000 names that are all in one industry for all the local towns and everything else, you're going to get that hyper-local traffic and you're going to get the hyper-local advertisers. The trouble is the domain industry is so fragmented with good quality names and bad names and everything all gets mixed in and the parking companies are just sitting there going, he's it all in, he's it all in, we'll take all the crap, we'll put it all out and everything just gets diluted. And the domainers really need to think about other ways of collaborating with other domainers who are very similar to them, not as competition, but as um, partners in the same sort of putting across the same ideas. And as I say, when I was at the, the Associated Cities um, um, trade show, I learned so much from the other guys who were like three years and five years ahead of me because of the knowledge that they had and taking that all back. It's just like when you sometimes when you go to the domain conferences, you learn a lot. But I thought collaboration with regards to the whole lot putting together generated a lot more revenue and a lot more ideas. And I think a lot of domainers should do that with different niche markets that they've got. Because every domainer has different niches, I think. I think some of them will do this and that and that. I don't, you know, I think we all pick and choose with all different niches. And I think there's, you know, if you collaborated with other domainers, have got the same a bit of brainstorming, I think these would make a lot more money. That's my thoughts. Anybody else want to share any stories happening this week? Any other sales or? Well, I was at the World Travel Market this week, um, which was normally done in London, that's normally in London, and it's where all the travel agencies and all the travel companies get together. And they've done it online this week. And I sort of spoke about the main names. I had a lot of meetings with a lot of hotels directly and they absolutely loved the idea of um, local local hotel names and stuff like that. So we're going to be doing a lot of business with a lot of hotels on our network. So I'm looking forward to it. I got a buzz for it this week. So it was interesting speaking to direct advertisers and they were absolutely loving it. They want to deal direct. And I think that's absolutely perfect. As a demeanor, I spoke to him and says, you know, if you go through this person, that person, we own the names, we're building the stuff, let's work together. Um, we've got a lot of collaboration, so stay tuned and I'll keep you up to date in the next couple of months with how we go in. Hey, in the uh, chat, I dropped in a, uh, e or something in the forums from the squad help group where they're going to now start paying commissions to anybody through any type of traffic that you have where that type in traffic within 30 days uh, allows anybody to buy any domain on their website. I mean, domains that aren't, are owned by other people? Yes, so the way, I just dropped the, the image of their posting, but they've got it set up now. Anybody who clicks on your, any, any of your direct traffic, anything you bring in through a, a direct traffic link to your lander, that even if a person goes and buys another name off their website within 30 days, you're going to get commission for it up to 500 bucks. It's 10% or max $500. It's like a seven day cookie. I think it's a beta program. Yeah. So the cookie yeah, you're right. It's seven, seven days. Seven days so it's, it's better than better than nothing. So yeah. that, that, that solves Michael's dilemma about sending somebody to traffic, send, sending your traffic, Sending your type in person to, to uh, someone else's potential sale. I mean, if you're, if you're getting a commission off of it, potentially. But that's uh, that's interesting. I mean, it's uh, they, they have volume there, right? So 
How many domains? And, and, and I think it doesn't matter if it's premium or if it's a white label market or if it's just a basic listing. There, any anything that brings type in traffic, they're going to pay that commission out on. Huh. I did have somebody mention, and maybe others of you have found out. Um, somebody was on the, um, the the call when Darpin was explaining squad help and the. Uh, follow-up marketing retargeting i think they call it with google ads and yeah. he said he visited a couple of d domain names he searched out a couple domain names on squad help and sure enough that cookie followed him around the internet and kept saying hey are you sure you know are you yeah. still interested in this name so they're spending i mean they're putting out money for yeah. for the amount of uh commission that they take they are actually putting out some i know i'll look at names and then i'll go to like i use hoster stats a lot and i'll be on hoster stats and if i've looked at a name on squad help Almost 99% of the time, I'll, I'll see links to it on hoster stats trying to get me to click on it. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're spending money. You guys are like quiet today. Crickets going on everywhere. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pooped. You make any good sales lately? Anyone? I already shared mine. Oh, I missed it. I came in late. Sorry. Yeah, I so I had a very I said it before. I had a well, nobody's talking, so I'll I'll repeat it again. I had a really good week. Since since the election was called, like since the weekend, I've had like nice offers pretty much daily, like you know, four figure offers. And like yesterday was the first day I didn't get one. Like, hey, what's going on? But like I, I closed one, one for three K. That was through Afternick. But like, and they're coming from all kinds of places. Like a couple from uh, from Epic Landers. I had one from Network Solutions Buy Service or whatever they call their their thing. Uh, I had one through Domain. Oh, geez, I always get them wrong. Domain Brokers. No, let me double check here. Through uh, Domain Agents. Domain Agents. That's it. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and, Not that I'm reading your stuff or anything. Yeah. <laughs> The main, the main agents, yeah. And where else? I, uh, the sale I made was through Afternick. Was there anything else? Uh, that's about it. Ryan's asking how many names you have to get that many offers. Well, it wasn't. I get offers all the time, but they were like, they were ba boom, ba boom, back to back. And like, I think Monday, I think I had three. And it was just like, but like serious offers, you know, like. Uh, you know, a uh, thousand bucks or, well, I mean, the way I sold was 3k. Um, yeah. It's just, if it just, it's, 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 it's a little bit of positivity. I, in my October was slow, but I think everybody mentioned that their October was slow, but the rest of my year was, I had a good year. Like my 2020 is going to beat my, well, it probably is. I probably already beat my last year. Last year I had some, I had a, a handful of very high sales for me. So that kind of skewed my results a little bit, but this year has been nice and consistent and it's, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so like with, after quiet October, when you get, boom, all of a sudden you get like serious offers day after day after day. It's like, wow, nice. Mm -hmm. It's fun. I sold uh, moderncosmetics.com this week through dan.com and a payment plan. Nice. It was seven thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars. Wow! Nice one. Wow! Wonderful. Thank Modern you. Cosmetics. And I had a couple smaller sales. Uh, Cherryology.com, which I just hand regged a few months ago, that was two thousand nine hundred ninety-five. That was through my restaurantbrands.com. Oh yeah. That's the Cherryology. Uh, Cherryology. Yeah, I just hand regged it. It's Wait. a restaurant brand. Yeah. Um, I love that though, name. Well, the one I sold was uh, Merchantology. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ology name sell. Oh, wait, was it Merchant Merchant They sell. Merch Merchantology. You... I have both of them. I yeah. own uh, I own Strengthology. That was always going to be kind of a related to my kettlebell thing. Strengthology. I always wanted to do a gym. I thought that would be a cool name for a gym. Great name. Yeah. I mean, the Ology names just seem to sell, at least for me. And then, yeah, so and then I had uh, one for $995, weplaystrong.com. I think I just saw it on TD Nam a couple few years ago that it had traffic and it was registered in a few extensions. So that was $995.
So we, we that's a pretty a good week, week for Brad. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you uh, you made some sales. That's all. It's always a uh, it's always a good thing. Um, yeah, and that's my September and October was super slow, like everybody else, and things are starting to pick up. That's a good sign, I think. I think a lot of people were just waiting for the election results regarding who doesn't really matter who they won. They wanted some kind of closure, even though it hasn't really yeah. closed yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's why for me, like this week, it was just like it was just like a light. It was just boom all of a sudden it went from yeah okay and then now i'm like i gotta check my email like every couple hours because like oh okay <laughs> you know Stu, were those buy it nows or make offers or um yeah all my names except for the ones that are priced over ten thousand, are buy it now um and usually it's it's weird normally my sales come mostly through afternick these the two of them were on dan and one was on squad help through my restaurantbrands.com. So, but so after Nick ones are due. <laughs> so your restaurant while. brands is a squad help, uh, white label. Yeah. I white label squad help. And, um, I just kind of got it going and categorized. So I'm, I'm hoping that that heats up a little bit. I actually started advertising a little bit on Facebook just to get, you know, get people looking at the site from the restaurant industry that are interested in entrepreneurship. Did you get the sales after you started advertising? No, I, I haven't. I just, I got the sales after I got my page updated so that it was categorized. It took a while to get that on the back end to categorize them by types of restaurants. So now that it's kind of ready in that regard, I just, I'm trying to pinpoint people that are entrepreneurs that are in the restaurant business. That ha- What is the site again? Restaurantbrands.com. My friend Steve does a lot of those brand sites, real estate, realty, things like that. Stu, I don't understand if you're pitching restaurant domains to restaurant owners. And right now, like I'm in Chicago and we just went on lockdown. We're going on lockdown again Monday for 30 days. We got no indoor dining. I can't imagine people. No, this is all. Restaurant domains. Yeah, Vito, this is a long-term, I mean, I do have some names like dealing with Touchless and Curbside, but this is a long-term project. I figure once this pandemic's over, it's going to be on fire. I just want to get oh, sure. people, to, I just want to get people aware of it, but my long-term sure. plan is for a, a year or two from now to, to be where it needs to be. But yeah, I'm not expecting yeah. to have too many sales now. Yeah, well, congrats Actually, on a uh, great week after, after your layoff. You. I, that, that's awesome. You deserve it, man. Thank you. Yeah, it wasn't really a layoff. They're holding my job. It was by choice because I, I can't really wear the mask for more than, you know, 20, 30 minutes at a time. It gets tough to breathe. So I really didn't yeah. have much of a choice. But yeah, they'll hold the job till after the pandemic. That's good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's uh, those of you on Squad Help have your own marketplaces. Are you able to have more than one? I think I even asked this question a couple of weeks ago when Darfin was there, if I forget now. Can you have more than one white market, uh, white label marketplace of Squad Help? Like, can you have one for restaurants and one for like? Uh, I, I'm not really sure. I know that I could have other names that are not part of that as premium listings. I think you probably can, but I, I didn't ask that at this point. Stu, do they take a commission? They did, but this was only like the seven per, the seven point nine nine percent because it it was the white label. Okay, and it's over. You know, they'll take a little bit off each one. They handled the whole transaction on the back end? Yeah, they just sent the first payment. I haven't even released the funds yet, but they're waiting. That's good. Okay, but they do the transfer and everything like that? They'd handle all that? Yeah, they're, they're, I don't think it's transferred. Yes, I think they're just, they're holding the name until it's paid off and then they'll transfer it, I guess. So it's a payment plan? It's a payment plan. That one, yeah, but actually, uh, both of those names were payment plans, yeah. Cool. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else have anything uh, they sold lately or something they want advice on for an offer? I actually, I, um, I bought a name. I'm curious about, I'm curious what people think. Sure. But, what is it? Um, resumeexpress.com. I was looking, you know, I got my resume together recently and 
I wanted it done fast, so I thought that was a great name. The only thing I don't like is the double E, but that, other than that, I'd like I, it. The double E doesn't look good, but it's a good name. Yeah. I, I personally, that doesn't bother me at all. I mean, yeah, it's better if it's not there, but I mean, like, to me, capitalization fixes that. And if it's right. a good name, it's a good name. Resume Express, I, 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 the moment I heard it, I, love, I loved it. I like that name. Thank you. Yeah, that, I, now, I think that's a, that's a that's a great name. I think mm -hmm. that a, a lot of people that have had jobs forever that have had to do a big pivot probably have maybe never had to do a resume. And if I go to that site, I know it's going to happen fast. They're going to dial me in. So I, I think it's just a beautiful name with this job climate today. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that, it, was a, it was a little, I think I paid $500 for it, which is not too bad considering it was a TD NOM auction. I'll yeah. price it. Yeah, that's good. I'll probably price it. Over ten thousand. Yeah, that's that's above my range, but I still like the domain. I don't think I would have paid five hundred, but that's because I'm extra cheap. It's not. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, I mean, look, I look at all my look. extra cheap. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I don't. I don't buy domains. But, uh, I, mean, I got most of my domains are, are, are you know, holds out, are holds out ish. And my soul. I just sold one for three k. That was I got for. Five, five bucks, you know, but, you know, again, whenever I say that, I have to stress that there's tons of domains that I got that I didn't sell, right? So it's, uh, you have to always stress that. It's not, it's not a simple, yeah, 100X. It's like a little bit more than 100X, but, you know, at 1% of your portfolio, you know, you, you have to, otherwise you're- Yeah, but at $5 a piece, I mean, that goes into 3,000 and quite a few names you bought, so- that covered them, right? Yeah, yeah. That that was a that was an extra good one. Well, it's it's five, but plus the renewals, and you know, it does. A, it's not as simple as that, but yeah. How long did you have it? That was one of my earlier ones. That was um, when did I get that? When I got I, it was, yeah, it was it was, twenty sixteen. Yeah, so that would be a little bit more than four years ago, but you know, I, I it was you know. There's a few weeks when I was like, oh, I'm buying some domains. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll start selling. Because I had domains before, but it was always with, you know, the intent to build out one day, kind of, maybe. You know, I had a big website previously. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't you know, just me talking. But, you know, same time, I never got around. Yeah, it's how most of us, well, not most of us, but I think a good chunk of us got into domaining, right? It's that, oh, get this domain, get this domain, get this domain. The next thing you know, it's like, well... I'm never going to build all these out. What do I do? You know? And thankfully I found, uh, I think Sherpa was probably the first thing I listened to. And then uh, I guess name pros when it was a little bit, a little bit uh, more active and uh, yeah. And then the rest is history. It's funny because if I take the, my, the block of domains I got that my first year of domaining, like I'm, really positive like I've, I've i sell a lot of my old names it's like what's going on so my newer ones are you know getting there but it's uh and my newer ones are much better than my old ones like it's just it's it's, it's a good feeling you know but it's just uh, you're buying 12 dollar ones now uh sometimes not often i haven't bought a domain in a while like since i stopped doing name cult i haven't gone through the lists and since i haven't gone through the lists i'm not paying attention so it's just i haven't I haven't bought a domain in the old ways that I have since whenever I stopped doing name cult, which is what, two or three months now? I'm not sure. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, actually, uh, now I'm in direct contact with somebody higher up at GoDaddy to work out some of my issues. So that's what I got to get working on. I got, uh, got all kinds. I got too much stuff going on. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I closed out one of one of my insurance things is now closed with my personal insurance. And they actually they gave me pretty much what I wanted. So I'm happy about that. Now it's just my battle with my the condo executive and that's still another big battle. But it's good to close one and it was a nice sum that, you know, was due to me. But it's just, you know, when you don't have when you're fighting for something for two years, two and a half years, and it's like <laughs> it's finally done. It's like, oh, okay, one one less thing off your back. It was Brad. like a very big domain sale, it felt like. Anyhow, what was I saying? 
Yeah. I'm glad on the insurance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice the main cell and then the insurance is like it's almost <clears throat> it was almost the same day. And it's funny because I think there's only, you know, I don't sell tons and tons of domains, but you know, I, I saw I saw, you know, a fair amount, but I mean, I think there's only one day in my entire domain career where I sold two domains on the same day. And that was the day I had my flood. <laughs> it was like there's people in taking stuff out and this that and I see this one thing and like, oh, that's nice. Another one, oh, that's nice. Now it's like but the, dam the damage was way more than the two sales. It was like, oh, geez. So, yeah. How'd you guys, any of you guys sell like two, uh, two, two, two four figure domains in the same day? No. Yeah, that was a, that was a really- Not a day, nope. That was a really- Lucky to sell one a year. There you go. <laughs> hey, I mean, I'm pretty sure I have RF. I know I know I sold the two dot VCs within 24 hours. Yeah, it's true, eh? Yeah. Um, but, and I, to this day, I don't know how that lightning struck. Because <laughs> they were totally different buyers. I mean, you can see the buyer details in Dan. Yeah. I mean, not like who it was, but to the, I mean, you can see what they said, who they said they were, which may or may not be who they are. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny. I'm, I'm sure there's people who think, it was it was dot vc that did that for promotion because <laughs> they made a lot of money after that week when they did their own promotion <laughs> well that's true but, yeah but no no it was, those were there were there were two good domains so what were they in did you say uh, it was a basic dot vc and fuse dot vc oh, really and there's a there's a fuse ventures so that one was I really like fuse yeah that was probably... good but fuse is really good i like that one and uh yeah. Have you sold any other VCs since? I have not. I had some stalled negotiations on one that uh, I thought was a little better than what they were offering. And it, it was through a broker. It got kind of sideways. I haven't given up on it, but it just uh, when, it when, didn't. That was what, two months ago now? A month and a half ago? It was like end of July. Was it that long ago? Yeah, the special ran from like middle of August to middle of September. You know, I have a funny story. Um, you know, <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you, Kevin. No, uh, <laughs> just getting ahead of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You thank go, you. giggles. Giggles. <laughs> so, yeah. Hey, there's so, a nightclub called the Giggles in Glendale. <laughs> I had sent an email to somebody and, and said, uh, you know, would you be interested in this domain name? And I got a, a reply back, but they weren't intending to reply back to me they're intending to reply back to somebody in their company i think they copied me in or something and it said something like of course we're interested in this where are you why why don't we have this domain name and i wish i had better uh uh, uh final results from that because they did not end up buying it but no way. Uh, i don't know i know i don't know if it's the price or whatever but it was like the president saying something to the it guys like well, of course we want this. Why? Why don't we have this already? It's just like, well, I don't want to work for you. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Sucks it in clothes. Yeah, I know. On the old Sherpas, there's been a few stories about that kind of stuff. Yeah, he writes TC. I mean, I've I've done that before, using CC instead of VCC or whatever. Yeah, I. Uh... I did. I don't. I don't have the uh, catch-all emails set up for everything, but I have one set up for uh, one of the partnership domains, which is a domain I own with somebody. And it's EuropeDeals.com, and apparently there is a Europe-Deals.com that is a marketplace for like tchotchke and just little trinkets and, and knickknacks and stuff. And apparently they're ripoff artists <laughs> because. Oh, no. I get emails stuff. from people that are just complaining and wanting their money back. <laughs> and I'm like, and, and I mean, I've got like a dozen of them. And at the first couple, I didn't do anything with them. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start, you know, replying all and also uh, putting and fixing the address 
with the dash say, and then just tell them, hey, I think these were misdirected so that the person that sent it knows that it was sent on to the right people, the right people should get it. And maybe, I haven't even said, you know, what, what's, well, I think I said, you know, this is the, this version of the domain is owned by an investment portfolio. What you meant is this and uh, whatever. And uh, they haven't offered to buy it yet, but I don't know if they will, but I mean, I, it, you know, it, it's got more uses than just what they're doing with it. It could be a real good travel site too, I think. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's funny to get these things coming in. And then I've got 70s.com, which has had a, uh, um, which apparently used to be like a um, internet service provider or something because there's just a wide variety of people that have emails on it. And I get like Facebook, like group suggestions to people because there are people that have their Facebook account associated with the email on yeah. 70s.com. And when I go to unsubscribe, because I'm always going to be logged into Facebook, it's trying to unsubscribe me from that. It doesn't realize that I'm unsubscribing yeah. them. So I can't stop Facebook. Other if I didn't oh, without canceling yeah. without canceling the um, the catch all email. I can't stop Facebook from sending these off the wall suggestions oh, for groups and stuff yeah, based on somebody else's preferences. You can, but it'd be dirty. Like you you log out of your account and then you request <laughs> lost password on that email. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. <laughs> But well, now, now if well, now no, if, in theory, the person doesn't use it, using doesn't use it anymore, right? So well, you can have multiple emails associated with the Facebook account. Yeah, but at a certain but, point, you're supposed to use your. I mean, it's, it's. I'm trying to think of a way that you can do it that you can get in touch with a person, and not like you, you, this is what you could do: mm -hmm. use lost email, go on the page on their mm -hmm. on their on their on their wall, and go. Please contact me if you want this domain. If you want, if you still want this account, yeah. Because I now own the email. And <laughs> yeah, no, like it, I, I, I'm I'm convinced they're either not using it or they're using it and they yeah. have a secondary email yeah. associated. So I'm not worried about that. It's just funny to get these things because yeah. you know I've got Facebook whitelisted in my in my in my email, so it comes to my inbox. I'm like, why is it suggesting this? And then I look at up at the top and see who the two email is and i'm like oh they're not yeah. suggesting this to me yeah. what's funny is the guy went to a high school that has the same name as the junior high that i went to so it's always suggesting oh, these okay. high school oh. things and i'm like <laughs> looking at it crossway oh okay yeah it's him again yeah uh, funny stuff and uh yeah setting up uh setting up uh um catch all emails on a lot of addresses will get you some really interesting reading yeah i'm sure <laughs> But yeah. I mean, I just get, I even get weird stuff just from my, my landers like mm -hmm. I have on, on Epic, uh, a lot of landers there. And it's just, sometimes it's just like, I have, I have one to me. I get tons of, of, of inquiries, but there are, I, like I know what is it? It's, it's a great, it's a, yeah. Daily playlist.com. I get so many inquiries in that domain, but it's always like, can you put my music up or can you do this and that? I'm like, what's well, the name? What was the name? Daily Playlist. There you go. So uh, I, I like I like those kinds of names, but uh, yeah. So um, I think uh, I'm Rich had asked about the best way to do uh, catch all emails. I've got a I've got a gajillion uh, credits in uh, GoDaddy yeah. for e free email forwards. Now it gets tricky because if you have your landers somewhere, you have to like do an A record. And then keep so that you keep the DNS at GoDaddy, and then you have to put in the MX records you need for GoDaddy email, and then set up a forward a catch all forward for that account. It's yeah, it's not that hard, but it's not really intuitive. Um, but uh, you know, it, it's definitely doable. Yeah. So. Yep. I have Actually, Epic for, I, I use the catch all email for Epic, which is really simple to set up. And I have a couple of those. Um, and sometimes my response is, I'm sorry, there's no Jessica here. And which of course, you know, and then I, I blind carbon copy it typically to the actual place. So they're probably going to call up and say, I thought I was supposed to send that to Jessica. 
and you know I'll say, oh, this is an empty domain name for sale or something like that, so that they'll know. Yeah. And um, I don't get that much response from the other side, which I, I'm surprised. I guess they don't acknowledge it even. Hmm. So you're saying when when you reach out to the people that it's really intended for? Yeah, I mean, I'll 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 respond to the person who sent the email quite frequently, and I'll say okay. there, you know, there is nobody at such and such and such and then I'll, I'll spell out the domain name I, and, and I will occasionally sometimes I'll say perhaps you meant the singular or something like that you know we're here in Michigan they're in Texas or whatever um, and, and sometimes I'll just make a blind carbon copy to the other actual person uh, sometimes I do an actual carb you know cc you know I guess I just mix it up because that's how I am but um you know, I, I try and make it make them aware that I'm not trying to steal the email, but I really don't need to see your driver's license and your proof of insurance and yeah, <laughs> your bank records. And <laughs> yeah, I think you sent this to the wrong place. In fact, I, I, I got an email from that same company internally. It was supposed to be from one guy to another. And it's like, well, here's this month's sales figures. Okay, maybe you need to just spell your domain name right because, you know, the email is not going to the right place. Yeah, I had a FD lander um, before I was really tuned into the whole trademark thing. Um, I picked up lipsmackers.com. Sounds like a barbecue joint to me, but it, lip smacker singular is like a like a flavored lip balm or something. What's funny is the company that has that trademark dropped this name, but I had an FD lander on it for a while and I would get like people wanting to buy the product all the time answering the um answering the and and some of them are like grandparents and stuff say my granddaughter wants this where do i buy this and other ones would be like oh you discontinued this flavor can can i get some and i'm like oh gosh <laughs> but, you should have hooked up with some dropship specialist there you go yeah well, opportunity missed that's the one thing I've been wondering about as far as how does the trademark work if you have a singular and the other person has the plural or the opposite? Like, well, is it confusingly similar? Yeah. Is it, are you using yeah. it in an infringing way? I mean, uh -huh. like, it depends. If it's something that could be multiple things and there's multiple trademarks, then you're prob probably okay. I'm not a lawyer, but. Yeah. Um, I'm just from my standpoint, I probably play a little too fast and a little too loose, but at the same time, I'm not buying domains for, you know, it's a, it's one thing to yeah. pick up a discount drop that's, yeah. that you might get taken. It's another thing to pay $10,000 for a domain that, or $50,000 and then have to defend it because you don't want to uh, lose that. You don't want that money to go to waste. Right. Like when uh, I was buying domains, I, I agree with Jason hundred percent. It's like, once you get below a certain threshold, it's just not worth the time looking into it. It's like, yeah, okay, but there is really an issue. I mean, it helps a lot. That I had a lot of interest in the subject. And I, I, I followed a lot of what, uh, you know, Zach Muscovich has, has, has said and written and uh, John Berryhill on name pros. I mean, he is their number one asset far and away. And he shares so much great stuff there that, you know, what, if you absorb it over time, you get a good enough feeling for it. You won't, you know, you might not be right. 100% of the time, you might not be as right as a lawyer, but I have enough knowledge that, you know, I, I have, you know, I'm not, I'm not too concerned, you know, it's uh, combine that with the fact I'm paying not much for the mains. Yeah, I'm not, doesn't bother. Speaking of absorb it, RF, I, I sold bounty paper towels.com for $500. I said, yeah, okay. Bounty paper towels? <laughs> bounty paper towel. I mean, that was years ago, but it's like, yeah. ah, yeah, sure, okay. Well, you know, I think we all had, you know, uh, let's say trademark adjacent <laughs> domains when we started, some more yeah. than others. I think, when did I own one? What was one of the first domains I got? And I got it because the numbers were super high and I ended up getting like, it was totally worthless. It was, uh, I think it was tomcruise.co. <laughs> and it was like because the numbers were so high, like in the millions i'm like oh well names are not trademarks well i i usually <laughs> i i now disagree sing, 
first name alone, yes, I'm okay with. Last name alone, I'm okay with. I'm personally no longer okay with first name plus last name dot com or dot anything. I think it's too specific that if you're holding that, you're holding that to specifically sell to a specific person who who's using as a business. You know, that's my line. Again, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not no, I follow that. To, uh, to would say. But I mean, that's my personal belief, and uh, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't. You know, my exceptions are dead people. And also potentially politicians, because some people could use a politician's website for non-commercial purposes, you know, but aside from that, not really. I don't buy, I don't buy many uh, first name, last name anymore. I do have a few, but what I, I, my preference is like potential last name that's also sometimes used as a first name and another last name. So it sounds like a law firm, oh, law, yeah. law firm like, like, like Cooper and Dennis or yeah. something or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. just to, or, or better yet, both names could be a first, first name or a last name. But it's not like John Smith. Well, you know, John That's Smith exactly. could be a first name, Smith <laughs> could be a last name. That's a bad guess. But anyhow, you know, and then well, a lot of names could be used for both, yeah. but ones that are like really obviously more, lean toward last name, but you still hear some hear some people. Um you know, using them as first names. I like that. I like those. Okay. Cause they sound like law firms, you know, it sounds like a law firm. <laughs> Daryl Lopes does a lot of first name and last names. He brags about it all the time on Twitter. He's always selling first names, last names. What's that? Daryl Lopes. Oh, okay. He's a broker out of South Africa. I know huge domain yeah. used to pick up a lot of first name, last names too. Yeah. Yeah, not sure if they still do. You can pick up everything at huge domains. They grab everything. If you drop it, they'll grab it. <laughs> yeah, but on the other hand, they also drop names. I picked up huge domains and yeah, me too. Yeah, they don't. If they don't, if they don't sell in a year or two, they drop them. If it's just a you know mediocre name, they grab my company That's name. That's what I drop. <laughs> Dropping names. Mediocre names. Okay. Dot com. <laughs> I, I, own, I, own, I, own, I own horrible domains or something I have this. I have a domain like that, like horrible domain. It's like it was like worst like, domains. Somebody's got worse domains out there. Pigeon shit domains. Yeah, right. But that's probably uh, type it in, Kevin. I was the first one to register worstdomains.com. Were you? Yeah, somebody was selling it, it recently. Somebody was okay. somebody was blogging about it or something recently. It goes to the archive actually of it that we did. I think. What was mine now? Was... Well, I, I hadn't registered a uh, domain once that uh, huge domains had dropped. And I don't know why I looked in the Wayback Machine for it, but something, I guess my intuition or something told me to, because I don't usually, but it was casinocruiseship.com. And when I looked it up, I guess I was just fine, got to find the year. Well, no, because I hand registered it. So it was should have been new but for some reason i looked it up and it was 2001 was when it was first born and um when i looked at the webs like the old website i got the landing page on huge domains so i was real surprised with that that's not a bad domain name mm -hmm. i you know, know i, I didn't there, there i don't know why they dropped there, it though. huh that there's there's I think there's nuggets out there like that because you know if somebody is looking at you know there's probably a whole bunch of people might have been looking for that name in the in the 2000s and then it gets dropped for whatever reason sits around for some number of months or however and then Deborah finds it yeah but this was dropped by huge domains it wasn't just dropped by a person so that's what I couldn't figure out like and they probably did... drop 10 percent of their names every year or something they probably yeah. Have. Yeah, you gotta Maybe it was because it was a three-word domain. Do you think? It's who knows with with their, what their dropping system is. It might be just it might be purely, to, you know, stats. And once you get, yeah. you know, what was the domain again? Uh, casino cruise ship. Not bad. Yeah. So I was wondering. Um, if I could have a critique on fantasyfootballus.com, 
just because I own some other fantasy football names and I'm like, ah, should I be thinking that they're not going to sell or what? You know, I'm, I'm, I would ask Paige for sure. Cause he's really into that stuff, but I mean, it's, it's the U S that makes it a little bit, I, 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 I didn't hate it at all. Uh, it wouldn't be my first choice, but I mean, it's not, I mean, I, I could see somebody using it. I just, I don't see somebody spending $2,000 to use it, which is what you would need to sell all that, right? To maintain a portfolio of equal domains. So well, I'm, I don't know. I wouldn't have to sell it at 2000. Well, okay. Yeah. But I, I'm talking if I'm talking for myself as a, inbound only uh targeting end users so like when you're coming on here it's, it's a different matter because you're putting a domain up for auction here your sell through rate is it's going to be what 80 percent or whatever it is so the math is completely different you have to sell it for, you know, on a wholesale level you get volume so it it changes it completely but if i'm buying a domain on auction like here that means the, the buyer here is buying it at wholesale usually with the hopes of selling at retail i'm just trying to think like you know i I'm trying, I, I i don't think it's i don't think it's that bad i just don't know if it's at the threshold where somebody would like how, how many alternatives are there to fantasy football us.com at at two th even fifteen hundred dollars there's there's quite a few you know um Trevor, do you have your date domains listed on uh, different venues, like after um, the actually, that's I'm in the progress of doing that. Yeah, definitely do that because you know I'll get sale. I, I'll have even on the ones that I have my own landing page or an FD landing page, I'll get sales from through Afternic, which is you know GoDaddy, but GoDaddy Afternic um, network, and that the, it'll come through there. It won't come through the landing page where they could go directly to me. So that indicates that they found it through either directly searching for its availability or possibly, and this is kind of even a, a better bonus from maybe they were looking for fantasy football domain names and that's the search term they use and yours yeah. shows up. And yeah. so they say, well, fantasy football that US available for five, you know, whatever. Uh, and they buy it. So definitely get them listed because otherwise there's just such a small percentage of, of I think sales from somebody just individually typing them in. I mean, it, it happens, but it's good to have it out in a, in a sales venue so that it's uh, available. Shown available. Yeah. yeah. I actually just started working with my rep at uh, GoDaddy and he sent me the um, whatever it's called sheet that has all the domains on it that I'm supposed to go through and take some out my brand bucket ones out and then yeah my own yeah whatever oh, that yeah, sheet don't is double called. list them if brand bucket's an exclusive deal so you know they you right. don't want to have those listed on there for sure yeah so uh, that's that's the project I'm working on right now as we speak <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, Deborah, sorry, I had to respond to a, to a text for a second, but um, I've had good luck selling USA names. I've not had much good luck selling US names. That, that was my next question. Yeah. Like oh. Fantasy Football USA, and I don't uh -huh. know if it's available. You guys can make a mad rush to see if it is, would be a stronger name to me than Fantasy Football US. And I know that uh, the us is kind of has a double meaning, uh -huh. but, um, you know, like we de I've definitely sold a few. A, uh, more than one, probably less than 10 USA names. Um, and I think they just, they, they kind of work better. They look better as a brand. Yeah. To me. Oh yeah. Uh, Good point. And fantasy football. Um, there's a lot of term there. I mean, there's already a lot of websites that will be more websites as time goes on because it's constant, it grows, it churns. Um, but uh, a lot of them use like Roto as a keyword. I don't know where that comes from. Roto. Um, I think it comes <laughs> from like the old days of fantasy baseball, but like Roto Report and Roto stuff, R-O-T-O. Oh. Um, okay. So, you know, just look up, I mean, you know, you can Google as well as I can. Just type in, you know, like fantasy Roto 
and then just see what comes up. You'll see some, some websites that have that in there, in their URL. Um, I mean, I've got a handful of names for it, but I mean, if you look at them, I mean, like a lot of, there's a lot of consolidation. So I don't know this is ever going to be a big, another big provider come out. I will be somebody, but like FanDuel bought Draft or DraftKings bought Draft. I don't remember who, but you know, they've had big ones. I mean, one, there's one out now called Monkey Knife Fight. I'm like, what? <laughs> Monkey knife fight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, so you can't be sure what they're going to brand on. Um, and so trying to pick names, but if you don't mind selling for a reasonable price, you know, there's always other, I mean, that's, I'm talking about, you know, you're not going to finding a hundred thousand dollar fantasy football name is going to be unlikely, but could you find something that a blogger or a, you know, a reporter or somebody that offered a, you know, tips page or something like that had, yeah, you probably could find something. Um, you know, even there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, um, YouTube stuff out there. So it might be something worth looking at uh, some dot TV so that they could have a URL that redirects to their YouTube page, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. So thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Was that your password? <laughs> I have to change it. <sighs> I hate I mean, that. That's like the silliest name I've ever I've ever heard a major company brand on. It happens every week, though. <laughs> Somebody says something, oh, it's like, yeah. "There's my password again." Like, how are how are people selling domains like that, I, and I am not having a ninety-eight percent success rate? You know. It's just like, well, I don't. They probably they probably chose that name because the domain was free, was available to Hanridge. That was probably like they were probably sitting around. What's the stupidest thing we can come up with that sounds cool that people will you know? Or, or it was probably it's probably a saying or something you know, like a dumpster fire or something. It's probably uh, that was probably yeah. uglier than a monkey knife fight or yeah, something yeah, you know. Yeah. And and they'll be like, oh, that's what we're gonna name our our business. <laughs> 